Welcome to Nittany Nation Game Day. The rest is over, and the fun is back. Short trips are the best trips. Short weeks, not the best weeks, but it is what it is. I think Maryland canceled school on Friday. Penn State gets back to Big Ten play and takes a trip to... Puddin Town, I think. It's like what town? Puddin Town Road. Puddin Town. Puddin Town? Yeah. Puddin Town. <laughs> Puddin Town. Puddin Town. <laughs> Let's get serious, but not too serious. It is a Friday night after all. We'll get you ready for game day. Are you ready for that With some help from the comeback kid. I'm considered their miracle patient. Nittany Nation game day starts right now. Hey, hi, hello, coming to you from Puddin' Town, PA. I'm Peter Terpstra, always standing on a box. Short week, short sports. And I'm Jack Horsch. I'm kind of hungry now. A little puddin'. <laughs> a little it's puddin'. Nittany Nation game day on a Friday night. Penn State's going to play Maryland later on, so put on your dancing shoes and let's get to Boogie Town. Last time we saw you, it seemed like so long ago. Penn State against Pitt. And a quick recap, Penn State would get on the board first, and then Pitt would take the lead 10-7 to in the second quarter. But after that, Jordan Stout comes in, hits a 57-yard field goal, a new school record Boom. in the third quarter. Noah Kane would have been good from in. 75 yards. Big leg, great hair. Noah Kane would punch one in after that, and the Nittany Lions come up huge at the end of the game with a goal line stop, 17 to 10. Penn State takes down Pitt for what might be the last time they play for a long time. Right, and now for the first time tonight, we are going to bring in our meme queen, Rosie Langello. And James Franklin told Penn State fans to wear white, and Rosie has obliged. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Hi, guys. Wow. <laughs> when you think of Friday Night Lights, you think of high school football, right? But coming off the bye week, Penn State hits the road for Maryland and for its seventh Friday night regular season game. I, I was trying to get in touch uh, with whoever I needed to get in touch with because um, I think Maryland canceled school on Friday. So I was trying to figure out a way that we could get school canceled um, on Monday. Uh, trying to get all the fraternities and sororities to back me up on that, but, but I don't think that happened. Friday night games always present challenges, but the Lions are currently 5-1 in those Friday night games, all six taking place on the road or at a neutral site. We don't practice on Mondays. So now when you go to a Friday game, you have to practice on Mondays, and guys haven't scheduled that way. So I think we had seven guys uh, miss some form of practice or meetings. This game also opens up conference play for Penn State. Now you may remember last year, the Lions opened up conference play at Illinois, winning 63-24 to on a Friday night. It sounds silly, but one of the challenges is when you play a Friday game, there's nothing to do during the day. Like when you play a Saturday night game, there's games on. They can watch games all afternoon because what you don't want them to do is just lay around and sleep all day. Penn State has 12 straight wins at Maryland, and they look to make that number 13 tonight, guys. All right, thanks, Rosie. As you saw, the game is on a Friday. Yes, you have a short week. That's tonight. That is tonight. tonight. But also, the team has some decisions to make entering this game. Right, besides all that, it's also the fourth game of the season. What's up, freshmen? What to do with the freshmen or anyone really on the roster? Let's talk about the new red shirt rule. Freshmen, or like I said, anyone, can now play four games and can still redshirt. So the big question, now that it's game four, is do you save that fourth game for later for some of the guys, or do you play them Friday night at Maryland? The rule, um, you know, I think there's, I think there's, there's benefits to it, you know, for the players, and I think there's benefits uh, for the program. You know, there's no doubt about it. But I think with all these rule changes, there's unforeseen consequences to it. It's funny, as a few years back, it was the NCA was all about deregulation, deregulation, deregulation. Well, all those rules are in that book for a reason. You know, they. A couple things to unpack there. All right, so Penn State's going to open up Big Ten play. Uh, first Big Ten game, uh, first road game mm -hmm. on a Friday night. They're coming off a bye week. Maryland's also coming off a bye week. Uh, besides the, the decisions when it comes to redshirting, playing on a Friday, I don't think it's as big of a deal this year as last year because you're coming off of bye week. 
That sort of, but I think people at like Penn State, it, they know what Friday's meant for high school football. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's cool. But it seemed uh, like Maryland. I, I, th I think, though, because Maryland, the game is going to be sold out. At least they have advertised it to be sold out. Mm -hmm. Illinois, as you know, last year, it may have been <laughs> half full at Memorial <laughs> Stadium Probably in Champaign. people at the uh, high it school was, games around yeah, there. <laughs> no, because they care more about high school football. Um, but Maryland is such a big deal because of the impressive start they've had. And it's kind of a, a mini rivalry with Maryland. These co you know, teams don't like each other. The coaches don't like each other. Um, and in terms of the red shirt rule, I think what Franklin did last year in kind of the inaugural year is he played freshman the first three games, mm -hmm. and then he kind of waited. If he felt like a guy was ready and like he was going to get meaningful snaps, he would play them and mm -hmm. green light them. If not, he would save them potentially for the bowl game because that would still give him that fourth game, get him to play in a cool environment and not have him burn that red shirt. So I think that's mm -hmm. kind of where he has to make the decisions. Plus, they're in Big Ten Conference play now. And you're really only going to see the ones now. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Friday Night Lights, Jack. All right. Beaver City will welcome some high school ballers later this fall. Pe people of State College, rejoice. Let's talk about it. Penn State announced Wednesday, State College Area High School will play Cumberland Valley at Beaver Stadium on October 26th. That is a Saturday. This is going to mark the first time State High has ever played at Beaver Stadium. And they're calling this thing the Beaver Stadium Classic. So maybe you're going to see this other years as well. Kickoff time on the 26th is either going to be noon or 5 p.m., depending on the start time of Penn State's game at Michigan State. It will also be senior night. Tickets will cost $10 and will be available at the schools and also at the Bryce Jordan Center starting on October 1st. 10 bucks is a cheap ticket for a game at Beaver Stadium. That'll be pretty cool. So mm -hmm. what did Penn State do over the bye week? Well, obviously, as numerous colleges do, coaches went on recruiting trips. James Franklin said assistant coach Terry Smith went all the way out to California for a trip and had to make it back on a red eye to catch Saturday practice. Now, during those practices, there was a lot of defensive focus on stopping teams on third down. Just an awareness of, of our players and coaches understanding the situation we're in, where the sticks are, what they have to get to, um, and then the calls that we make and our players understanding the strengths and weaknesses of those calls. I mean, obviously, we're all aware um, screens have been something the last two years that, is, that has hurt us in, in those types of situations. Um, so we have to make an awareness. If we call man coverage and you got the back and man coverage, you better be in position to make it you know, difficult for those guys to block you. All right, coming up next, Penn State football is getting some extra TV time as HBO, they're coming to Happy Valley. Plus, we hit the streets. Game day traffic is the best. What can Pitt State do about it? Next. At the Pennsylvania Lottery, we're always striving to squeeze more into our scratch-offs. Whoa, just was at maximum winnings. Like the new Mega Millionaire with top prizes of a million bucks. <clears throat> The science behind the perfect prize. Keep on scratching. We got another live one. Hey, Mercedes, how about letting your hair down a little? How about a car for people who don't flee golf? How about something for a guy who doesn't want a corner office? Hey, Mercedes, I don't even own a tie. You think I need a mahogany dashboard? Hey, Mercedes, can you make it a little cooler in here? I'm setting the temperature to 68 degrees. We hear you. We made a car that does, too. The 2019 A-Class. Lease the A220 sedan for just $3.30 a month at your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. If you need a tow after an accident or you had a run-in with a deer, just say, I want Professionals Auto Body to tow me. Regardless of whether you have AAA or any other roadside service, just say, I want Professionals Auto Body to tow me. Why would anyone need access to so many doctors, hospitals, and urgent care centers? Wait for it. Go, 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 go. <laughs> That's why. Here's the plan for guaranteed in-network access to the top-ranked care of UPMC and thousands of community doctors and hospitals at home. <laughs> UPMC Health Plan. You're watching Nittany Nation Game Day. 
Welcome back to Nittany Nation game day. We are getting wild on a Friday night. Well, Not sorta. too wild. Sorta. Yeah. Penn State's getting back on TV. You better get someone's HBO password stat. Can I yours? Can I yours? Can I I'm, I'm already borrowing someone. Oh, okay. I'm, I'll, I'll kidding. I'm guessing. I'm kidding. I'm guessing <laughs> I have to say that legally. HBO <laughs> is coming to campus. Penn State will be one of four teams featured in a new all-access type show on HBO. The school announced earlier this week. The show is called 24-7 College Football and will document Penn State's week heading into its Purdue game. It's been a discussion really for the last three years. Um, after talking to people from other programs that did it, uh, they felt like it was a positive. Um, and then the other thing is for us with the, with the unrivaled show that we already do, the cameras are already around all the time. So uh, between the coaches and the leadership, uh, the leadership council, we didn't really feel like it'd be a whole, whole lot different than what we already do. Here are the deets. The Purdue game is on October 5th. So you're going to see the preparation, the game week heading into that homecoming kickoff. That game is at noon. Now you can watch the episode on HBO on October 9th. Quick turnaround for those folks at 10 p.m. Florida, Arizona State, and Washington State will also be featured in different episodes of the show. So we took this a step further, actually. We got a hold of the executive producer of this HBO show. His name is Bo Battingly, and he says the idea of the show is this, to follow four different football coaches and see how they get ready for game week. So it starts with Coach James Franklin. Penn State's a program that has been elite, and James Franklin is a dynamic coach. And to see how James Franklin is trying to return Penn State to the very top of the mountain, and they've had some, some great moments throughout his tenure, but to get behind the curtain and see this program that is steeped in tradition, uh, has some really cool things they do on defense, and then just to see how Coach Franklin motivates. He just motivates by saying, put in town. Put in town. Put in town. Put in town. So once again, let's send it to our partner in kind, Rosie Langello. She got a haircut. Everyone say oh hello to her gosh, haircut. Oh my gosh, you guys are embarrassing me. Anyway, better yeah. call Becky with the good hair, and that's a Beyonce reference if you don't already know that. But okay, back to football and Penn State things, obviously. We have something special coming your way. We welcome Penn State Athletic Director Sandy Barber to our studio on the bye week. She answered plenty of questions for us, like Penn State's new traffic and parking plan, which might have had you bumper to bumper last Saturday. Change is hard. Um, change is going to come with some missteps, both from our patrons um, and from really kind of testing the plan. And that's the thing I do feel good about, is that we've had uh, a 3.30 game, we've had a 7.30 game, and we've had a noon game. Now that noon game was pit. We know we had a lot of visitors coming from mm -hmm. the west. That's always going to be a challenge. Um, with the, and nothing about this is going to be perfect. It's how do we make it the very, very best it can be. No one likes a traffic jam, especially on game day. I know we, we don't like that whatsoever. All right. Coming up next, we bring you the story of a man behind the mic who's had a hard journey that you would just not expect. RMC Oxyoke Outlet, your one-stop shop for muzzleloaders and muzzleloading supplies located in the Penn Eagle Industrial Park on Belfont. RMC Oxyoke, your complete source for muzzleloading and black powder hunting supplies. When you scratch and save this weekend at Wolf's, you can get an unbelievable furniture deal. Just in time to celebrate the fall season. Our fabulous Taylor sofa at 20% off. It's an amazing deal at just $5.27. And at 25% off, it's just downright incredible. $4.94. How much will you save? Come to Wolf's. Scratch off and save as much as 25% off. Plus, pay no interest for two years. Scratch and save. Held over through Monday at Wolf's. Dear MS, when we first met, I thought you'd control every part of me. Overwhelm me. Define me. But I found a way to give myself more space. I met Ocrevus, an infusion treatment that's two times a year. For adults with relapsing or primary progressive forms of multiple sclerosis, Ocrevus is proven effective in reducing relapses in RMS and slowing disability progression in RMS and PPMS. 
Don't take Ocrevus if you've had a life-threatening allergic reaction to it, or if you have hepatitis B. Tell your doctor about vaccinations or if you've had Hep B, as it could come back. Ocrevus can cause infusion reactions that may require hospitalization. It can increase your risk of infections. While no cases of PML were reported in clinical trials, it could happen. An increased risk of cancer, including breast cancer, may exist. Infusion reactions and infections are the most common side effects. Sorry, MS. You don't get to control every part of me. MS can't own us. Ask your doctor about two times a year Ocrevus. Make a pit stop during your busy life. Sit down for a slice of fresh made pizza or grab any of our cargo good to go items with Martin Gold Star Rewards. Save three cents per gallon on gas. So whenever you're on the road, stop at a Martin General store and you'll be good to go. We are Martin. You're watching Nittany Nation Game Day. Story time. There's a guy at every Penn State game you just cannot miss. He's loud, he gets the people going, and he's pulled off a comeback that deserves its own show, not just an intro. When you get into the game, chances are you'll hear it. Then you'll see him. Eric Gaspitch is the mic man with all the moves. A student who's um, confident, who has outstanding speaking skills, who um, has a lot of energy, obviously, because he's going to be performing in front of over 100,000 people. To get him on the microphone saying, Are you ready for Penn State football? A loud mouth with a bigger heart. I'm being very genuine in saying this. I will do anything to make somebody happy or make their day. Here's what you don't know. His story starts way before he even picked up a mic. I was playing soccer at the age of 10. I was in a rec league and um, I got tackled by a player on the opposing team. This was not a scraped knee. This was serious. Gas pitch had a traumatic brain injury. With a lot of damage to the frontal lobe and the occipital lobe. So front and back, so the brain had bounced back and forth. I couldn't read, I couldn't write, I couldn't do math. I, I, I was able to see letters and identify what a letter was, but I couldn't put it together into a word. He would have to work for years to get back on track, relearning how to do everyday things, having problems with memory, and especially noise. I hear it negative decibels, and loud noises to you are extremely loud to me. My father one day was wrapping a sub, like a sandwich in tin foil, aluminum foil. And the sound of the aluminum foil was enough that I, I had to walk away from the situation. Now if that sound was enough to make you uncomfortable, imagine being in this stadium with more than 100,000 people loud and proud. During my freshman year, I didn't even have student tickets to the football games because it was still too loud for me to be able to handle it. During my sophomore year, I decided that I was gonna be a Nittanyville student and I was gonna be in Nittanyville every week that I could. Even if I had to put headphones on, I was gonna be in that stadium because I'm a Penn State fan, live and die, and that's what I was gonna do. When he had the chance to try out, well, you know the rest. Are you ready for Penn State? I'm considered their miracle patient, so, I wasn't supposed to be even able to finish high school in their eyes. Eric Gaspitch is the mic man, and he is so much more. Peter Terpstra, for Nitty Nation. Now Gaspitch says he's the first mic man to not be a cheerleader since his coach, Curtis White, who you also saw in that story. He travels to all the away games too, and he likes to thank his family for all of his success as well. You can catch him at all sorts of events, not just the football games. Well, coming up next, this one is more than just Big Ten play. It's a battleground game. Plus, Puddin Town, I think. It's like what? Now? Puddin Town Road. Puddin Town. Puddin Town. Yeah. P Puddin Town. <laughs> and how many times can you say that? We're talking about Puddin. Next. For more than 40 years, the Beers family has been serving Blair and Cambria counties with exceptional work. 
great prices and 24-7 service. As an American Standard dealer, we offer a 10-year warranty. And with our status as a Mitsubishi Electric Preferred Diamond Contractor, our customers receive extended warranty protection. Call us today or visit at BeersHVAC.com for special offers. Beers Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We are your indoor weathermen. The determination. The practice. The teamwork. The touchdown. Bake Shop Bakes is ready to help you score big with family and friends with fresh dumplings, breads, cookies, brownies, and so much more. And if you're not ready for something sweet, jumpstart your morning with us with a delicious sandwich or salad for lunch. At Bake Shop Bakes, there's always something new. Score big with Bake Shop Bakes. With the new state-of-the-art facility already breaking ground, this is the perfect time to become part of the CenterCrest family. CenterCrest is offering up to a $4,000 sign-on bonus for qualified applicants. And if you are looking for advancement, we offer tuition reimbursement and a scholarship to LPNs and RNs that meet the criteria. It's time for you to join the next best place to home. Choose CenterCrest. Are you tired of being stuck in traffic? Gas too expensive? Wow, that guy looks miserable. I'm glad I take the bus. Well, then Amtran is for you. With plenty of bus stops around the city, we can get you where you need to go. And with our new My Fair card, no need to worry about having the exact change. Do yourself a favor and start riding the bus. Visit us online to see where Amtran can take you. Watching Nittany Nation Game Day. Just came back from the Arboretum. Have you been there lately? I have not been lately. You ought to go. Yeah. Where's Millbrook? It's on Puddin Town, I think. It's, it's like what town? Puddin Town Road. Puddin Town. Puddin Town? Yeah. P Puddin Town. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, I guess it's, it's a Puddin Town show. <laughs> Welcome back. That was James Franklin talking plants in Puddin. Puddin Town is the name of a road near the stadium. Where's the Shug when you need it? Here's a look at practice earlier this week. Now the team had to change up his schedule, as you heard, with the short week playing on a Friday night. The Maryland game is about more than just Big Ten play. It's about Cruton, and it's about beating your former team for Coach James Franklin. It's in recruiting. It's in the region. It's in the footprint. It's in the state. It's, it's all of it. They come to Pennsylvania. We, we try to go to the DMV. Um, so all those things kind of kind of factor into it, and then obviously, like you're saying, the history. Um, you know, I I think I spent eight years there. Um, I had a great experience. I'm very appreciative. Johnny Holiday uh, reached out the other day. I go I go way back with with Johnny Holiday. Um, you know, so it's it'll it'll be you know it'll be it'll be a great environment. It'll be a great game. Now Maryland is the closest road game this year for Penn State. And as we get closer to kickoff, we once again check in with our resident Maryland beat reporter, Rosie Langella. Rosie. Man, I take the Nittany Nation ranks this week, and I'm the Maryland beat reporter. Yep. Anyway, a sold-out crowd in College Park announced, uh, Maryland actually announced that on their Twitter Wednesday, and it will also be a blackout, so good thing Penn State wears white for away games. Now, some guys will be returning home to their home state uh, tonight, and we go to hear, uh, we got to hear from two of them. Check it out. You're battling with these guys, you know, year round. Depending on the route you take, College Park is about four hours away from Beaver Stadium. Just being so close to each other, um, all all those things factor in, and I think that's that's where I think football um, is, in some ways, maybe different than other sports, is how competitive it is year round. Very competitive when it comes to recruiting out of the old line state. 11 Nittany Lions are from Maryland. I chose this place because it was the best fit for me um, academically, the coaches, 
Um, the players I fit in here the best. Well, there's a handful of Nittany Lions from the state of Maryland, including Cam Brown, who's looking for some extra tickets for his last time playing in his home state. I'm trying, honestly, trying hard to try to get as many tickets as I can. I probably will need at the end of the day a probably plus 15 of my normal four. So great opportunity. Go on the road. I think it's going to be a really good environment. Uh, we got the fight song playing at practice, which I know well uh, for eight years. And for those 11 players, Friday night is another chance to spend it under the lights at home. It means a whole lot. I remember going back as a freshman when my role wasn't that big and how much it meant to me. But now being a starter, being able to uh, be out there with my brothers and fight on, I mean, in my state where I grew up, where I have the most family at, means the world to me. So. Tariq also said he will need a bunch of tickets. He has a big family and has a lot of people attending, guys. Moving on, it is now going time home. for Pete's Picks. People what? are going home. It's nice. Yeah. It's when you have. It's, it would have been cool if like, Trace got to go back because Trace mm -hmm. was big in there. From the DMV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's His from final game, Virginia. though, was against Maryland, so it worked out. All right, Come weekly on. segment where I bring you the best thing I saw this week. Can we just take a moment to admire the sweet, sweet stash? Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback Gardner Minshew. Nick Foles went down with an injury, and all the Eagles fans were sad faced. And then this big, bold face full of hair took over. It's been smooth grooming ever since. Washington State fans used to wear fake mustaches at games. Even if he doesn't win another game in the NFL, he's won the internet, and he's won our hearts. Swoon. Mustache mania. We'll, we'll see you Sunday. And his dad. Have you seen his dad? His dad. His dad looks like a Gardner <laughs> Minshew's dad. I will tell you that. All right. So we're running all the way to the bank. It's time to make some money. It's time to get jacked. The three pack of games that I pick every week against the spread. So first we're starting off Baylor plus three against Ohio State. Matt Rule is an underdog. Incredible. Take the native. Bears at home as an underdog. Alabama laying 38 against Ole Miss. Ole Miss gave up 28 points to Cal. Cal doesn't score. Alabama's going to score 500 points. <laughs> Not an exaggeration. And then Oklahoma and Texas Tech. This number just seems way too low. Oklahoma just seems to be churning out Heisman Trophy quarterbacks. Might have another one in Jalen Hurts. Take the Sooners minus 27. Oh, hi, Rosie. Hi. Welcome. Whoa. Whoa! Oh, so locked in on the prompter. I can't. Okay. I can't. It's Can prediction we just time. Away from okay, him, we wrap this thing up. We we. I've already uh, given my prediction uh, earlier in the week. What and, was it? Uh, Thirty-eight to three. I just picked last year's score. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> so okay. I've been going low like every week, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, what, um, I'm gonna say twenty-one to three. Penn State. thirteen, Penn State. Uh, okay. Thirty to twenty-eight, Penn State. Uh, Jake Pinnaker kicks a last-second field goal. I think this is gonna be a lot closer than people think. I think the fact that it's sold out. A rivalry game. Maryland's not a doormat anymore. No. So I think this is actually me. Uh, Maryland is rising. If you yeah, look are. at their pro their they projection, are. bring in Mike Loxley, former offensive coordinator at Alabama, seems to have a lot of people excited about the football team there. Once again, they're scoring a bunch of points. Unless you're playing Temple, we don't want to talk about that. I think, I think losing to Temple though fired them up, and we'll have them focus. So you could go either way. All right, that's going to do it for us. Time and TV, Penn State, Maryland, 8 p.m. kick, televised nationally on Fox Sports 1. Big 10 opener, first row game. See you later.